want to thank y'all for tuning in to Workshop for the Soul. Um, back at it again for God's glory. I do appreciate the opportunity to be before you. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come before you, dear Lord, we ask that you show mercy upon the minds and the hearts of the people as they hear this message, dear Father God. May they understand, dear Father God, what the text means, dear Father God. May I deliver this message in love as well, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So what I do want to touch on is called tolerance. And I know me, out of all people, can be one of the most intolerant people. Um, I know where I stand on that um, because the the letter has the potential to be um, black and white to me. Uh, we still have to make sure that we show the letter in love. Okay. Um, but at the same time, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 15. I'm just going to read that, right? I'm just going to breeze right through it and I'm going to touch on verse 16 and that's it I'm breaking down reading one and I'm breaking down the other so stick with me now right Romans chapter 12 verse 15 says rejoice with them that do rejoice and reap I'm sorry weep <laughs> with them that weep crazy wabbit I got a problem with the R's and W sometimes I'm tired but rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Okay. 12 and 16 says, Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Now, we have to treat, treat me as you want to be treated, right? So that when we interact with each other, okay, we always are tolerating each other as ourselves. If you don't treat me as you want to be treated, then you won't interact with me as yourself, right? No matter how much more prettier you are than me, no matter how much more money you have than me no matter how much more angry i can you think i can be right no matter how common you think i am no matter how long-winded you think i am no matter how evil you know i can be as god's people we better be hitting the reset button for people because jesus hit the reset button for you so you get that? Treat people as you want to be treated so that when you interact with each other, we are always tolerating each other as ourselves. We know we got high tolerance for ourselves. We'll make all kind of excuses for ourselves. Naturally, because we are, it's a natural response to defend yourself. This is what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. To, to tolerate your neighbor as you would tolerate yourself is the equivalent of loving your, loving your neighbor as yourself. And if you take that attitude, well, I wouldn't mind if that happened to me. Or I wouldn't mind if she said that to me. You know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or this attitude, um, that wouldn't bother me if that happened. You know, they don't, uh, they don't have tough skin. Uh, if, you, if, if you take that approach towards your brother or your sister... You don't love yourself enough and you better hope Jesus don't take that stance with you. Because you wouldn't like that. Treat me as you want to be treated so that when we interact with each other, we are always tolerating one another as ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So if we mind not high things, the scripture says mind not high things and in this verse, it didn't say not to mind high people. It said things. Check this out. High things are things that can be brought or sold. Material things that can cause you to be in your feelings and become lifted up or vain, elevated, or just flat out better than everybody else. Now, 
in word, not well, how about this? Not in words, but in your spirit. Like you can have a spirit that you better than everybody else, but you don't say it with your words. See, because most of us know how to not say bougie stuff to us to seem lifted up. You know what I'm saying? Like you know not to say arrogant stuff to seem arrogant and lifted up concerning your cause. You know what I'm saying? So so we know how to say that. But we say stuff like, uh, you know, the Lord is good. Which he is. You know. But our actions on our spirit say don't get too close. You know what I'm saying? Like, our actions in our spirit say, if you break it, can you afford it? But yet, what's coming out of our mouths is, yeah, I got this because the Lord is good. But my spirit say don't get too close to it because you can't afford it. My spirit say, uh, 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 my body language and spirit say you ain't up on this. Hmm. Hmm. My body language and my spirit say maybe if you worked a little harder you could get like me. But the words that come out of my mouth is the Lord is good. But my spirit say. If you work a little harder, you could get like me. If you be a little more obedient, you could get like me and enjoy the blessings of the Lord. That's what my spirit say. Right? Right? But we don't want Jesus saying, you ain't spiritual enough, so you can't get to the next level. We don't want God, we don't, we don't want God showing us that. Even though his word don't say that, we don't want God treating us like that. So why would we treat others like that? Mind not high things. Okay? Romans 12, 6 says, But condescend to men of low estate. Right? You cook good, but yet when uh, that person from, you know, your family or, or the or the sister from the hood at the church. We all know the sister in the hood at the church. You cook good, but when that sister at the hood from the church invites you to come over to her house, because she, she had your house, you, you invite, she over there, right? She your friend. She She's living, she got a tough situation, right? Right, but you cook good, but every time you turn around, she invites you over to her house in the hood, but you could never seem to make it. Right, but it's con but condescending men in low estate. Why? Why can't you never seem to make it? Is it is it because uh, uh, maybe you own a Benz and your car can't be parked in that bad neighborhood? Hmm. You don't park your car in certain places. You already park at the back of the lot. What you doing going over to sister so and so and she live in the trap? <laughs> like like her neighbors underneath her trapping not the she live under she live on top of the band though, like or or is it because this person's arrogant and you know or because maybe 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 you don't go over a house? Not because she's poor or not because she's in a financial strait or anything like that. Or maybe because you don't or, or not because your car might get jammed up. Or, or maybe it's because, you know, when you go over our house, the kids in the neighborhood, whatever, children in the neighborhood, they, they just bad, right? Or is it because this person has an arrogant and has ignorant and arrogant views and they're sarcastic on top of that, right? You finding it hard to give your testimony to them because they get on your nerves, Maybe it's the lowest state of, you know what I'm saying? Oh, or because uh, uh, the Bible says condescend them in a lower state. Or because your family members drink and you don't. And your children barely know your family. Instead of using the differences, right? Instead of using the differences to, to um, as a teaching point for your children, you alienate yourselves and your family from your loved ones because your lifestyles are different but yet you can't condescend the men of low estate so they only know you as a even as a family member from an exterior point of view because you won't build with them
Now, everybody should know the limitations of their own salvation. But don't. Do not not condescend to men of low estate. It says condescend to men of low estate don't always mean you have to have lunch with a homeless person. Like that's you know what I'm saying? Like that's a scenario you nine times out of ten ain't gonna run into on, on the um on the humbug on the on the weekly type deal. Like that's not the scenario you're gonna run into. There's a greater scenario that you'll run into uh, um if a person is unsaved. They are a man of low estate. If they are ignorant and unlearned, they are a man of low estate. Um, you are of low estate to Christ. Do you want him treating you some type of way? Huh? That's the question. Condescend a man of low estate. You should be able to build with everybody. Right? But it also says, be not wise in your own conceits. Um, those of you who know me, I'm talking about like those of you who interact with me on, on the daily know. Like flexing, being wise in your own conceits is flexing your, your wisdom with pride and arrogance. Okay? Being wise in your conceits, flexing your own wisdom with pride and arrogance can cause a person who you talking to to sleep flexing your spiritual knowledge in a prideful and narcissistic way like because as the saints we you know I even feel guilty of it because I know the word and I can back it up and I can quote it and I can live it I could. I could tell you how how to get down in such a manner that it comes off prideful and narcissistic and, and my spiritual knowledge, which ain't even mine. It's the gift of God first. But yet, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm flexing on you with my knowledge and, and I'm doing it in a prideful way. Like, you know, or you could be just be stunting on a new person in the job who think they know it all. In a condescending, um, you know, in a condescend, in a con, and how should I put this? You could be flexing on a new person in a job who think they know it all, but in a condescending, talking down to them kind of tone because you got all the wisdom regarding policy. You got a new person at the job they just started and they think they know it all, but yet you use that as the platform. To talk to them in a condescending way, because they know it all, so they got this know it all kind of spirit, right? But when you when you coach them on the right way to do something, you do it in a condescending tone, um, because you got all the wisdom regarding the rules, and you use that as a moment to flex on them. Be not wise in your own conceits, right? Don't be wise in your own excessive pride. Jesus didn't do that with you. So, be not wise in your own conceits. This is Workshop for the Soul. Appreciate you for tuning in. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescending men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. That's the message for today. Y'all take it easy.